It is a Saturday morning in Jackson and West Tennessee. Good morning to you. This is Tricks of the Trade, and we're out there on the stream. The 93.1 signal is out on the stream today at uh, News Talk West 10, WTN.com, or 101.5. You can get it on TuneIn app if you use that also. We're also live on y'all.com. So just dial that up. No apostrophe, Y-A-L-L.com. And you can see and hear everything that is going on. And here is Mr. John Allen, the premier honeydew helper in this part of the world. Hello, John. Hello, Jim. How are you doing this morning? Uh, it's a little nippy up here in, in Macy's front window. Uh, yeah. When did she come up, uh, up through the glass up here? Well, my dog got to barking at me this morning, and I realized that the lock didn't catch, and the back door stood cracked open about six inches last night right by her bed. Oh, she's not a happy camper. No, she wasn't. She let me know it. She gnawed on my socks this morning <laughs> and, and uh, let me know she's cold. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame her. Ooh. I don't blame her at all. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't even look and see what the temperature is, but it's supposed to have been in the 20s, so. Yeah, it's about 29, 29 this morning. That's close yeah, enough. That, that's I close saw a little uh, ice out there yeah. in the pond, in the potholes that hadn't been fixed there you go. in our lovely city streets. Is it a pothole or a sinkhole? Oh, we got both, I and know. lots of them. I know. I know. But there's plenty of potholes out there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Almost had a wreck coming here this morning. Two of the biggest deer ever seen in my life run across Highland. Right by my house. Do they run that ditch back there that runs behind your property line? The coyotes have that ditch. Coyotes got uh, that. The okay. deers uh, come across the lane, and they kind of go between me and Peter's house. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, running across there, and, and there's a lot of them. Out on Old Humboldt Road, I was going somewhere late in the afternoon last week. And right there across uh, from where you turn on North Star Drive, you know, there's a vacant lot in there. Oh, yeah. I counted six out in the open. They just, you know, tooling around, having a little, little, little oh, yeah. early dinner. You know, they they yeah. they're taking over. Yeah, they're there. And and they're that there. and the buzzards. Yes. Now we are in the middle. Hicksville has become <laughs> home for the one of the largest buzzard roosts I've ever seen. I've still got to go down there and see that. You mentioned that once before. Now are these are these your, your basic West Tennessee buzzards, or are these those big t- ugly turkey buzzards? A buzzard is a buzzard. Well, that's true, but turkey buzzards are even. But uglier. they have taken over the, the the cell tower. I bet in in you know, yeah. They kind of somehow gonna get into the signal and start talking smack to a bunch of people <laughs> in there. But yeah, I mean they're covered up. Never yeah. seen anything like it in my life. That's crazy. You know, there used to be you could find blackbird roost all over town that were that way. You go out there late in the afternoon, and you get covered up with. Uh, Blackbird stuff. That's right. Because, you know, they're coming in there to roost. No, the buzzards eat the blackbirds. Do they? No, I think so. They just ugly them away. Oh, <laughs> ooh, it's nasty. <laughs> we have some phone numbers we need to let you know about this morning. If you'd like to talk to John straight up on the telephone, it is 731-891-6161. Victory Honda text line is open and ready at 731-4107560. And if you don't like the subject that we're talking about, well, you set the subject and we'll talk about what you want to talk about. There we go. That's fine. Hey, uh, we're going to do something a little different. I'm just going to say a shout out to some listeners. Yes. That we know we have in the Chicago area. Yeah, that's crazy, man. It is. They're also customers of mine, I found out. But uh, they like the show. And uh, so, uh, hi, Cheryl. How you doing? (laughs) Hello, Chicago. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I grew up listening to Chicago radio when I was younger. WLS. Crystal Radio. On my little J.C. Penny desk in my back room. There you go. There you go. WLS AM 89. That's yeah, exactly man, yeah. right. 100 watts. Yep. 100,000 watts. 100,000 watts, yeah. And uh, what was Oh, I was trying to think of some of the sponsors. Carol's Red Hanger Shop. You remember, though? That was one of the late night sponsors. It was a local local place. That was like after a, my bedtime. Yeah. And then uh, Mr. Norm's Grand Spalding Dodge was one of their <laughs> one of their things. He was uh, he was big in the drag racing business on, on the Mopar side back in those days. But oh. He was big uh, with Art Roberts and uh, John Records Landecker. Yes, Records really is my middle name. That's what he always said. So. <laughs> You're old boy. Uh, I am old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's oh man, I'm telling you. 731 891 6161 410 7560. We'll get you in the game and we want to play your game this morning. So, what it's uh, you said, and now I'm not, I don't know whether I'm supposed to repeat this in, in, in public or not, but you said you got, you got 
outsmarted by a smart switch. Yeah. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Yeah. You remember, you got a customer listening now, so you well, better be I know, careful. But, you, know, but, you don't want to lose know, confidence in you. You know, a lot of things that 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 I talk about here are are uh, true life stuff. You know, Ooh. things you know that I'm actually out there doing, and yep. we run across something. Right, kind of makes you go, huh? Yeah, don't it though. <laughs> so, um, yesterday, I had one of those huh moments. Yes, <laughs> had to change out a light fixture right. in the ceiling, and. Um, I'll actually get around to answering the smart switch thing, but I got to yeah. lead up to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know it. So, so we go up here, and it's in an older home. And uh, originally, there was a little round light fixture that had a dome on it and two bulbs in it. Right. Just like everybody used to have in the kitchen, the old milk glass yeah, uh, fixture. Sure. You know, and you put you. Uh, uh, two light bulbs in it that it was rated for 60 watt light bulbs, but everybody put hundreds <laughs> right. if they couldn't find 150 in it to yeah. get enough light in there to see what you was doing. Right. You don't want to mix up your muffin mix or anything <laughs> like that. You got to got to see things. You got to know what the colors are. Yeah, that's right. So, so th- th- this person had taken that fixture down several years ago and put up a, a little LED fixture that was – Look kind of like what fluorescent fixtures used to, about four yeah. foot long, you know. Yeah. Well, it it that fixture started not doing right. It was act, it looked like a strobe light in there. It was you you thought you was in a '60s film flick in there. It was <laughs> it was just uh, the, just flashing all the time. It kind of hurt your eyes and make you get dizzy if you looked at it I long bet. enough. And and so we had to go put another one up. So uh, me and my oldest went up there. Because I was expecting it to be way up in the air, and I being a bigger fixture, I need a little help holding it up there while I put the wires together. You got it. So here we go. We get up there, and first of all, ceiling's not but about seven foot high. You know, you almost reach it. Yeah, yeah. I, I almost rub my head up against it. But <laughs> but uh, we we get to to going, and uh, when I pulled the fixture down, things went boom. Like electrical uh, as light a, As in a brighter light right in my face. And uh, I looked up in the junction box where things were. Right. And all them wires that were up there were naked. Uh-oh. You know, you know, the difference between naked and naked. Yes, you know that do. story, I don't sure you? sure <laughs> do. Been, been guilty of both. <laughs> <laughs> but these were naked yes. wires. Uh-huh. And uh, so here we are. We we can't put things together because I just had a fireball in my eyeballs. Yes. And it and and scared my my little one to death. He uh, <laughs> he said, "Daddy, I don't like that." <laughs> yeah, don't do that. I again. said, "Well, it wasn't supposed to happen, but you know things happen sometimes." And what had happened? What caused this was, and uh, I was gonna before you brought all this up. I was gonna yeah. get into this today, but. You know when you buy a light fixture back in the day and, and you take it out of the box, it's always got that piece of insulation on the back side of the, the yeah. light fixture. Yeah. And that's there to uh, shield the wires from the heat. Mm. Well, But it also gets in the way. True. So when you're trying to get your screws to go through the little holes that they don't, pre, they don't uh, pre-poke the holes, I guess <laughs> you'd say. So a lot of people just out of habit, they'll take that piece of insulation off the back of that fixture and throw it in the trash can. Yeah. And because it just makes the installation go quicker. For sure. Well, they had done this. Well, that was uh, boo-boo number one. Right. And the boo-boo number two was they had oversized light bulbs in it. Ooh. And when you take all of that heat directly on that, uh, all those wires for, could have been... 30, 40, 50 years. I don't know. I wasn't counting. I wasn't there when it first went in. Yeah. When I pulled on those wires, all of that insulation literally fell off in my face. Oh, I mean, it just fell on the floor, made a mess. Yeah. The old uh, pit bull that was there uh, with us got to lapping things up, and I had to <laughs> poke her out of the way, and she's growling at my feet because she know what I was doing. She thought I was dropping a snack on the floor. Uh-huh. Yep. But it, but it wasn't. It was old cooked insulation. So. Whoa. Uh, had to turn the power off, 
<laughs> that would have been a good idea. <laughs> it was a good idea, I <laughs> thought, idea. you know. So we turned it off and had to get up the tape. Yeah. And had to start taping the wires up to get the proper insulation on there. So we get it all put back together. And I go and, and put the new LED fixture up and put it up there and flip the power back on. And I said, okay, hit the switch. And we hit the switch. And it didn't switch. Uh-oh. Nothing came on. I said, well, did one of them wires get away from me up there? Did I not get them all back together? So we took it back down. Yeah. And... uh Got to looking, and everything looked just fine. So I put it back up, and I turned the power back on. And I even put a meter on it while I was under the light. It had 120 volts. I said, hey, good thing's cool right now. Yep. Put it all back together. Put it on the ceiling. Hit the switch. Light didn't come on. Mm-hmm. And I said, this ain't right. There's something crazy here. And I, I said, where's that switch at? And there it was on the wall over there, but it looked funny. It was one of them little switches that got a little dome, a little thing. dome thing yeah. on it. Uh-huh. And I said, "Hmm, we got to look at that." So we pulled that out and found that somebody—I don't know when—put the switch in, and uh, they had a couple of the wires hooked up, but not all of the wires hooked up. <laughs> they ran out of wire nuts. Yeah. I, I, I guess they did. <laughs> But they had that wired up to where it was motion activated. Well, I asked the lady, I said, have you got an Alexa around here? She said, a what? <laughs> I said, Alexa. You know, one of them things that does things for you and plays you. She said, no, I don't have one of them. I said, you got internet up here that where you've, I said, obviously you got a smart switch. Yeah. And uh, she said, No. I says, well, yeah. what turns on, what turns your light on and off up here? She said, just walk around. I said, oh. Motion activated. Motion activated. Yeah. So then it all come together. When we walked in there, the light came on. <laughs> so, you know, it was one of those things that uh, just didn't think about and uh, had one of those smart switches on there. Yep. And when you walked in, she said, it kind of comes in handy. You walk in, you a handful of groceries. And your light comes on for you. Yeah. And when I'm out of the room, it goes back off. Huh. And I said, well, ain't that nice? Yeah, I've seen, I've seen, I haven't seen many of those uh, in, in homes. I guess they're coming. Obviously, they are. But I've seen a lot of them in commercial things like doctor's offices and things like that. When you, you know, so that, that way you don't have all your customers or clients come in there touching the same light switch all day long. Mm-hmm. You just walk in, you know. Which is, I guess that's 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 pretty cool, you know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm still getting used to LED. Period. You know, my wife still can't believe that little old bitty thing, less than the size of her thumbnail, could make light. <laughs> yeah, or wiggle fast enough to do that. Yeah, you know, true. that frictions, yep. electronic friction. Electronic that's what we call friction. that. Yeah, man. I'm telling. You. Well, hey, if it works, it works. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, all right. Yeah. Let's see. Now, did we answer the question? Yeah, we you did. Got, we you got, got the, outsmarted by yeah, a smart switch, but, I, I you, was, but you beat it in the end, right? Yeah. We, oh yeah, it's fine. You know, yeah. once you walk around in there, things kind of happen like they're supposed to. Yeah. So, so are we those, did all right. Are those things expensive to put in, or you just wire them in like you would a normal normal switch? Yeah, you just got a few wires in there. You got to know which one goes where. Right. Which it's a color code thing, and um, if you don't have the instructions, it's kind of a trial and error sometime <laughs> yeah, because understand. they had been thrown away a long time ago. But with a meter, you can kind of figure it out. Yeah. So yeah, we're all good. Speaking of, speaking of switches now, uh, uh, I have on the outside of my house, which we're about to replace at some point because it's been dead for a while, uh, I have a, spot, uh, a floodlight out there pointing down on my driveway that is motion activated. Yeah. Um, when they put that thing in, they bypassed – the switch. There used to be a switched light. Yeah. Why did they have to bypass that? Because he said it was because of the motion activation. Yeah. It uh, it energizes. It's, it's normally going to have a switch override. Yeah. Which is a good thing because sometimes you want to turn the light on. Yeah. And not because of motion, just because you want to see. Right. But you got to think about it. It most think well, if you're going to have some motion, you're going to be out, out there, so it's going to be on anyway. Yeah. 
but um, you may not be. It may be somebody else out there. It may be somebody else out there. Yeah. So you know, people have different reasons for doing different things. In your case, you put it up there for the intent of when you pull in, uh-huh. it would come on. Exactly. You may not uh, want to do anything else with it out there because you may have a street light out there. Oh boy, do I have a street light? Yeah, <laughs> and and uh, that's another thing. Uh, you get one of these lights now that's motion slash photo cell, uh-huh. and you decide which one, and then you've got a street light out there. Uh-huh. Talk about getting the light fixture confused. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because the street light will keep the photo cell from coming on <laughs> because it's light outside. Because it's light outside. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and another, another thing I found out after I'd already screwed this thing into the wall with, with masonry screws so it won't go anywhere we when we moved into the house, we put a, a flagpole on the front of us. So we can fly to red, white, and blue. Okay, yeah. that's cool as long as the wind's out of the south. But when the wind comes out of the north, the flag points the other direction, and it goes up, put, 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 up and down, and the light comes on. <laughs> How's that go again? Put, put, put. <laughs> <laughs> if your flag don't sound like that, it's okay. It's, you know, mine's, uh, mine's a little weird. <laughs> But yeah, so you you got that's another thing you need to be you need to be careful of is is to know what's around those motion switches because they'll go off. They will do that. Yep. Little critters will make them go off. And, yeah, um, you know that's one. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. You're, I talked to your son because I think he's got the same type of uh, security cameras that I put on my house uh, yeah. before. It. And the first time mine went off after I set it up out on the patio, you know, to check things on the back door. First time it went off, I looked down at my cell phone. I said. Man, this stuff must be made out of styrofoam because it knew what was out there. It said <laughs> animal detected. How do it know? That's right. You know? So, but yeah, that, that, uh, that kind of freaked me out. And then if you go out there, it's going to say, you know, person detected. It's crazy. But go figure. <laughs> it is. It is. You're listening to Tricks of the Trade with John Allen here on uh, 93.1 and 101.5 at 817 on a Saturday morning. We're going to take about a two and a half minute break right here and hear from some of our great sponsors, and we'll be back. Give us a call, 731 891 6161, or text us at 410 7560. Check us out on y'all.com. And you can see and hear what else is going on. We'll be right back. Three anymore? Lack of energy during the day? Difficulty sleeping? Reduced mental focus and memory? Weight gain, including belly fats? Reduced sexual desire and performance? Studies show after the age of 30, most people produce 3 to 10% less hormones each year. And I felt it. I decided to do something about it. But I didn't want 152 shots of synthetic testosterone per year. What I discovered is changing my life. All testosterone replacement is not the same. Hormone pellets contain the same chemical structure as your body's natural hormones. They're placed under the skin and release bioidentical testosterone consistently to the bloodstream and last up to six months. Same thing with estrogen for females. I feel great. I don't want youth wasted on the young. I want it wasted on me. Feeling better for you can start with a simple phone call. Dr. Shannon Bone at Advance We Have in Medical. It's 731-503-4277. It's 503-4277. Call today. 7 7- 3-1-503-4277. You'll be glad you did. Hello, Jackson and West Tennessee. Jared here, operating partner at the Blacksmith Restaurant, downtown Jackson. The new winter menu is smoking hot at the Blacksmith. Our new pasta line is a must-have. And if you're fishing for some warmer weather, you must try our fresh ahi tuna and fried tilapia sandwich. And we're not stopping there. As we go into 2021, let us be your one and only destination for date night. With live music on Friday and Saturday night, and this year, we'll be adding some more additional fun. Details to follow. Don't forget, Valentine's Day is right around the corner. We have already started taking reservations, so do not hesitate. Contact one of our blacksmith specialist at 731-736-3484 to book yours now and please check us out on our website at the jacksonblacksmith.com and follow us on our facebook page for all the latest events specials and opportunities the blacksmith restaurant 216 north shannon street jackson tennessee can't wait to see you Saturday morning in West Tennessee, this is Tricks of the Trade with John Allen. Check us out online at y'all, Y-A-L-L dot com. All right, on the billboard on y'all dot com, it says we're going to talk about how tight is tight. I've, yeah. checked, I've checked with the sensors, and I think we're clear Yeah. so far. <laughs> 
so far. So far. <laughs> well, um, as tempting as it is yes. to, to get into that, <laughs> I will refrain <laughs> And Thank stick you. to plumbing. Thank you. There you go. There, and that is an excellent question because they always say, well, put just, how tight do I need to get this? And somebody like you who's been doing it for 30 years says, well, just hand tight. Well, my, my hands may not be as tight as your hands. Well, it, it is. You know, it, it goes back to, I, I have to start out with a little, little true story. And, yeah. and uh, back in my early, early, early teenage days when I was working with Mr. Porter, we would occasionally do a little little plumbing project where we would build some cabinets and we'd have to take out the sink and then put a new sink in. Right. Now, at that time is when these stainless steel sinks uh, started becoming popular. Everybody had to have one. So instead of just putting the old cast iron sink that took me and him both to pick one up, we put in these little lightweight uh, stainless steel sinks. Right. We had to take the basket strainers out or put new ones in and remount your faucets. Right. Well, I didn't know anything about plumbing, but it looked pretty easy. So I commenced to putting basket strainers on. Okay. And I put them on. And, uh, you know, if you've dealt with a basket strainer, you got a great big old round four-inch uh, nut that goes on the bottom of that basket strainer. Mm -hmm. And you got a get a little what they call plumber's putty and you roll it out in your hands to kind of make a skinny rope right and you run it around the bottom side of the lip of that basket strainer to where it kind of squished down in your sink right and then you put that uh, uh rubber nut or rubber washer underneath it under the sink and then you put that cardboard washer now People get those mixed up a lot, and they'll put the cardboard washer on first, and, and then they'll really have problems. But the cardboard washer is there to where when you put the nut on to tie it down, it'll slide around uh -huh. and get tight. If you put if it's trying to spin around the rubber washer, it'll just roll that washer out, and then you got it, a problem. It, it, it'll leak. Well, anyway, yeah. so I'm putting this in, and I get it all together. And we're getting ready to pick up our tools and get out of there. And we flip on the sink. And the uh, water starts running. And then next thing you know, we'll get the water out in the floor. And you realize you got a leak. Uh -huh. So I look under there. And I've got water coming out around the basket strainer. Well, I thought I got that thing tight enough. So I got my wrench out. And I tightened it up some more. Turn the water back on. It still leaked. So, Mr. Porter looked over at me and he said, Johnny, <laughs> he says, did you get it too tight? I said, what do you mean too tight? He says, well, you, you got you got to get it snug. and But if you bear down on it to tighten it up, you can get it too tight and it'll cause a leak. Yep. And I got to thinking about that. Now, I've been used to dealing with galvanized pipes at that time, which a galvanized pipe, if you don't want something not to leak, you bear down on it. <laughs> Hunker down. And uh, old-timey plumber used to always tell me if you had a plumber come up to your house and he only had one wrench in his hand, tell him to get out of the house. You had to have two wrenches to tighten it up, one to hold the pipe and the other one to tighten the fitting. Right. Otherwise, you're unscrewing what you're tightening up on the other end. <laughs> right. So anyway, got to looking at it, and that's exactly what had happened. I had really bore down on that uh, yeah. washer up there and got it too tight. And I'm thinking, how can you get things too tight and it cause a leak? Well, that's exactly what happens. So then you look at those other fittings on the drain lines under a sink. Now, back when everything was metal, you had rubber washers under those uh, P-traps that you had under there. Right. And if you tighten them down too tight, they would leak. And then here comes the plastic. Now, on those, you don't even want to put a wrench on them because they got little nubs out on the side of the washer for you 
thumb and your forefinger to go on, and right. you just get them up just what they call finger tight. Finger tight, not hand tight. Not hand tight. <laughs> So here we got real tight, finger tight, snug. Uh-huh. We got all these terms that are not in the instruction manual. No way are you find them. And there's only one way to learn all of those, and that's from experience. Right. So I learned a little trick at that time dealing with drain pipes and things that were no longer galvanized is you have to get the right feel to it. Right. So you got to think in your head you got to get it tight enough to expand that washer that's under that nut, but not too tight to where you're putting a wrinkle in it and it's still causing a leak. But then that goes over to water. On water, and you had galvanized lines, you had to get it real tight. <laughs> and then they came out with these plastic supply lines, and you had to get them snug. Uh-huh. And then now you got these braided lines that they come out with. Right. And you just got to, as they say, cinch them up because they got a built-in rubber inside the nut that you don't really know unless you try to over-tighten those. Yeah. So here you go. How do you teach all of that <laughs> in, a, in a manual or a YouTube or, a, yeah. or a whatever it is they Try to yeah, teach YouTube, everybody. YouTube videos. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and it gets back. Sometimes you just got to have human being experience. Yeah, yeah, you really do. And and that's one of the things that we've kind of lost in a lot of the trades nowadays is nobody wants to spend the time to teach an apprentice how to do it. That's right. And it, it uh, you, you know, they back in the day when they had uh, unions mm -hmm. and you went through an apprentice program, they, right. they taught you stuff like that. Right. But the world's changed. We don't have unions around here anymore. True. And uh, these kids coming out of school, unfortunately, they think they know everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because they've seen it on a video or a whatever yeah. them things they, they look yeah, at nowadays, exactly. you know. But uh, they're wrong. So, uh, you know, I, I just, when, when you're training some of these young bucks, I'd rather they just not know anything. Yeah. And then you can work with them. Yeah. Just you come in there with a blank slate and let me let me show you how it's done. Yeah. And yeah. then not be looking at your cell phone yeah. the whole time or looking up a YouTube on how to do something. So, uh, anyway. You know, I, I, we got a text coming through on the Victory Honda text line over here. And if I just read the first four words, I would have thought I wrote this. Hmm. It says, I can't fix anything. <laughs> That'd make a good. Uh, <laughs> that sounds, that sounds like me. Yeah. Okay. It's, no, here it says, I cannot fix anything but my hair. And you're asking John for advice. Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 wait a minute. Okay. No, seriously. I cannot fix anything but my hair, but I really enjoy your show, female. I heard your show about washing machines, and you had me afraid to turn my new washer and dryer. I kept waiting for something to happen. Guess what? It made a noise I never heard before. <laughs> They'll do that. <laughs> oh, they will do it. Thank you, Texter. Appreciate that. That was good. Can you give out our phone numbers I one can. more time? I just had a text come in on my phone that okay. said somebody wants to call in. Okay. Well, that uh, call-in number is 731-891-6161. There you go. Or the, our radio text number is 731-410-7560. Either one of them will get you right here into the board, so just give us a Give us a call. Mm -hmm. Tell you what we need to do uh, while we're waiting on that person to, to dial up the number. West End Fence Company is one of our one of our two title sponsors for this show. Yes, they and, are. And uh, they do uh, they do good work. They're good folks to work with. You know, I went and in fact here here comes that call right now. Let me see if I can get this into the loop, John, and we'll we'll do that before we talk about West End Fence Company. Go ahead, John. Hi, Papa. Uh, well, hello there. <laughs> uh, How are you doing this morning? Right now. Oh, you are. St. Mary's. Well, how about that? Uh huh. Oh well, well. Uh, uh -huh. where where are you playing today? Um, I'm playing. I'm playing. Uh, Jack Hall Park in Trinity, but we're playing at St. Mary's. Okay. Mary's. Well, all right then. Well, I hope you have a good game and you win today. Play hard, Thank okay? You. Have Have you got the 
All right. Love you too, honey. Thanks for calling in. Hey, that's all they have to say. Hey, that's all they that have keeps to say. it real. That that's puts right. it all that's in perspective. Right. I, I talk to her any day of the week. Was that Miss Maddie? That was Maddie. And yeah. You want to know something kind of freaky? What's I'm, that? Uh, she came down to the office late yesterday afternoon. Yeah. And she was sitting in her in her uh, Dida's old office, and she was on the computer. Yeah. And I went in there and said, "What are you doing, Maddie?" And she says, um, "I'm I'm doing my lessons." And I looked down at it, and it was uh, medical. Okay. And I said, "What are you what What are you doing?" And it was it was talking about uh, tonsillectomies. And they had these two guys on here showing how your larynx and all changed. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know how you can used to suck helium? Yeah. It makes a high pitch, makes your voice go kind of uh-huh. high yeah. squeaky. Yeah. Well, there's also a gas, which I didn't know, and I still can't tell you the name of it, that you uh, that you can suck on some of that and it puts a real low tone in your voice. I got to get me some. Yeah. <laughs> It, yeah. Anyway, I was I was learning something from her yesterday. Oh, listen, the stuff that they're teaching these kids at, at the age that they are right now oh, is yeah. mind-boggling. It you is. Know, my wife said once, I think last week, she said we were helping the kids with math, and she said, I didn't see this till I got in calculus in high school, you know? And, uh, yeah, it, it, it's crazy. It, it, it absolutely is. But, yeah, all they got to do is that little, that uh, that three little words. Yeah. Say, I love and, you, and, and they got you. Yeah, the next thing you say is, and what color was that car you wanted? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to your tricks of the trade on 93.1 and 101.5 on this Saturday morning. And we were going to talk about West End Fence Company. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, West End Fence Company, we're, we're very proud to have them as one of our sponsors. Yeah. And I made it very clear when I uh, took this gig on that as far as sponsors and commercials and stuff like that, I don't talk about anybody I don't believe in. There you go. And uh, I'm not going to start praising somebody and I don't know a thing about them. Or, and if I don't like them, I ain't going to talk about them. There you go. But I'm going to talk about these folks. Yeah. They, they, they do a good job. Do. Uh, West End Fence Company has been one of our subcontractors, and they have been uh, have put up just hundreds, maybe thousands of fences in this area since they've been around. And, and uh, they keep doing it and doing better because they're good at what they do. Right. And uh, it's a good, it, it's nice to have them roll up in your driveway and uh, you have a crew that looks professional, not like a bunch of long-haired hippie freaks <laughs> that uh, that jump out and you don't mind leaving them in your yard. Right. And uh, so it, it, it's good to have, so we're glad to have them. And, and I'd invite anybody out there to uh, call West 10 Fence Company and put up any kind of fence you want, whether it be chain link, barbed wire, Wrought iron, whatever, they'll put you a gate up, and yep. whatever you want to keep in, it'll stay in, and other things will stay out. That's exactly right. Yeah. At no extra charge. At no extra charge. 668 59 It's that simple. Just call them. They'll come out and give you an estimate, and you're off and running. There you go. All They're right. local. We got another call coming in, John. All right. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Hey, how are Good you morning. today? You know, you're talking, you're just talking about us. Uh, Tightening these uh, fittings, just getting a feel for it. These plastic fittings, say like PVC, CPVC. Yeah. And you got to screw it onto a metal fitting. Yep. How do you know when to stop? <laughs> <laughs> you know how many I've gone through? Just one more crack. I tell you, it. it you're, you're right. I mean, you know, first of all, you got to put your your pipe dope on there, or some people may use the tape. I, I'm still like the dope, yeah. but when you start screwing it down, that is one thing you do not want to over tighten. You want to get it in there to where, exactly. uh, to where it's good and snug. But uh, my rule right. of thumb is, you get it down snug and then turn it about an additional quarter turn, and you ought to be in pretty good shape. Okay. And uh, the well, one man snug is different. <laughs> Depends on your strength, also. Yep. <laughs> you know, you're exactly right. Your snug it, may be real, real, might be very tight for me. You know the another question. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, I'm getting ready to put a hot water heater in my house. Actually, it goes underneath the house. They recommend putting it in using plastic unions. Are those any good? They got a O-ring, a rubber O-ring in it. It looks like something's going to fail in about five or ten years. 
plastic unions. To tie the pipe to the metal. top of the water heater? Is that what you're talking about, right. to tie the pipe? Okay. What you need yeah, to hot, get. Hot, hot water heater. All right. What you need, you probably have a, a, a pipe stubbed up out of the top of the water heater. came from a factory. You're going to need a female right. transition fitting. Now, I'm going to tell you what I use because it will save you a lot of time. If you'll go down to the plumbing store, wherever you want to get your fittings, and, and ask them for a, it'll be a three-quarter inch, three-quarter inch female transition fitting to shark bite. And you won't, okay. have, to ha won't have to have any glue or anything. Just dope your pipe up. Screw that transition fitting, which will be copper, down on top of it, right. and then just stub your uh, your CPVC into the top of that fitting. And if you are using CPVC, right. you'll see a little plastic insert that's in that shark bite fitting. Pull that out, right, and then just stab Pull that. It out. Yeah, stab that fitting. I mean that pipe down in there, and it it's. When you're pushing it in, it's make sure you get it all the way to the bottom of the fitting. Now it'll it'll slip in okay. once, but you're not done yet. You got to go down about halfway down that fitting, and uh, and then even all though right. you can and even though you can spin that pipe in that fitting, it is in there right and it won't leak. I love those shark bite fittings, so uh, don't be afraid to use those and. You won't have a pipe, and you all um, won't have a, a a leak, but also you'll have a good watertight fit, and it won't start to oxidize and get that little white crystally stuff around that fitting three or four years from now. So you would not use those plastic unions? No. I wouldn't. Okay, okay I was afraid of them. I mean, I wouldn't because if you use a female union and if you get it too tight, it'll crack on you. And and also uh, yeah. also and also on these CPVC fittings, over a period of time, and I say time, I'm saying five to ten years, they will get brittle. Right. And if you go to try to unscrew one, chances are you're going to snap it off with your oh. wrench. So uh, I like okay. to I, I like to stay metal on uh, when I'm going plastic to metal use a metal fitting. Yeah. Now if you're on up in the line and you're tying two pipes together, you can use the plastic uh, couplings and or unions or whatever that'll be fine. But when you're going to dissimilar metals or whatever your pipe composition is, I'd right. stick with a metal the whole time. Okay. And uh, why, the other day when I went to Lowe's looking for some fittings, yep. plastic fittings, they were virtually completely out of CPVC. Yep. This has been going on for several weeks. Completely, Pro I mean, nothing in CPVC. Yeah. Something, something going on at the factory? or do Well, we've had uh, people been using a lot of them because they've had frozen pipes and the supply is low. Okay. But uh, a lot of people on repair plumbing are going to shark bites because they're so easy, and you don't have to you don't have to clean the pipe, you don't have to glue it up, you don't have to wait thirty minutes before you put pressure on it again. But uh, if okay. you if you do need some CPVC fittings, if you'll go to the nothing against Lowe's, but if you'll go down to uh, a place like uh, Kenny Pipe and Supply on Airways or Ferguson on uh, the bypass. Yeah, uh, yeah, I deal with Ferguson. Yeah, yeah I like Ferguson. They, they're a great place, and, and they have plenty of those fittings and a, and a good inventory. And you'll probably also find them to be okay. just a little cheaper. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it would be the other way around. <laughs> yeah. No, now, it won't. that hot water heater, I bought a ring. Hot, not a ring, state, state yep. hot water heater from them. Yep. Oh, I think it was in 2003. Yeah. And I've talked to you before, and you said, that hot water heater, you better think about replacing it. It still don't have no leaks yet. It still have had to change out the elements on it. Mm-hmm. 
you know, it, winter come around, I said, I'll go ahead and buy a new hot water heater because this thing's about due. It won't give it up. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, that's stay. good. That's all right. It, Never it, seen it's funny. Day. It's funny how water heaters, some of them will start failing in seven or eight years, and others I've put them in. 30 and 40 years ago, and they're still going strong. And why, I don't know. I, I can't understand it. I bet it's the water. It's, the water. it's got a lot to do with it. It really does, you know. Well water eats them up. City water uh -huh. is a little more gentle to them. Yeah. Okay, appreciate you calling in this morning. Hey, one more thing. I cannot remember that uh, it was three initials for a chemical that you could use to put on your roof to clean the streaks off of your shingle roof. What was that? Or didn't you have something you mixed up one time? Yeah, I used hydrogen peroxide and baking soda, and it will help clean that. It was, uh, let's see, to make a quart up, you make a, get a quart of hot water, two cups of baking soda, and uh, two cups of hydrogen peroxide. Mix it up real good and spray it on. It'll foam a little bit and uh, let it set for about 15, 20 minutes and wash it off with a garden hose. Two cups of hydrogen peroxide, two yep. cups of baking soda. Yep. Or maybe it's right. a cup of baking soda, excuse me. It uh, hadn't mixed anything. Yeah. And then and it'll it'll mix it up real good and spray it on with a little pump up garden sprayer. How much hot water? A quart. Or what's the That's it. That's it. One one quart of one quart of water. Yep. Hot water. Man, I appreciate it. All right. Gotcha. Thanks a lot. All right, that's the way it's done. Seven three one eight nine one six one six one four one zero seventy five sixty get you in on uh, on the uh, text line and uh, we're going to check with a couple more of our uh, our great sponsors here. Got a text we're going to talk about when we get back. So stay with us here on Tricks of the Trade with John Allen. Looking for a reliable automobile, a second car, or a vehicle for a new driver? Millsaps Auto Sales offers family-friendly inventory, providing growing families the ability to put everyone on the road. Financing plans designed to fit all family budgets. Tony Millsaps, owner of Millsaps Auto Sales, one of this area's most trusted pre-owned car dealers. So if you're trading vehicles, selling your car, Tony's goal is for you to be 100% satisfied. Visit Millsaps Auto Sales. From the 45 bypass, drive a half mile on airways toward the airport. Millsaps Auto Sales is on the left. Best Mac. Look, Mac, the bug stops here. Whether it be bugs, termites, or moisture issues, Mac Pest Control has you covered. Russ McKelvey with Mac Pest Control, servicing Jackson, Memphis, and Greater West Tennessee. Have you been experiencing issues with mold, fungus, or moisture in your crawl space? Give us a shout at macpestcontrol.com, and we'll line you up for a free inspection. The temperature may be dropping, but things are heating up at all six Jackson Sonic locations with the delicious new Queso Burger. Just imagine that toasty Sonic Burger bun with a sizzling burger patty topped with shredded cheddar cheese, grilled onions, hatch green chilies with a zesty cheese sauce and mayo. Guaranteed to warm you up on these cool nights. The delicious Queso Burger waiting on you now at all six Jackson Sonic locations. Sonic truly is America's drive-in. Physicians Quality Care, we treat you like family. Everybody has to see the doctor every once in a while. And quite frankly, nobody enjoys it. But in reality, what we all hate about the doctor's office has nothing to do with medicine. It may be an unfriendly staff, old magazines, an uncomfortable crowded waiting room, or nothing for the kids to do while you wait. It's probably a lot of things. At Physicians Quality Care, we understand your frustration. That's why we do everything we can to lift your spirits while we treat your illness. Walk in medical care for the entire family, from 7 in the morning till 11 at night, seven days a week. And you never need an appointment. Now with two locations, in Milan next to Lowe's and Walmart, and on Pleasant Plains Extended in Jackson's Columns. Physicians Quality Care, we treat you like family. 
Collision Specialist knows this has been a trying year, so while on vacation, be extra safe, extra happy, and extra daring. Take some friends or family to the beach, catch a little extra sunburn, and dance till the sun comes up. Try hiking the high roads, camp the mountaintop, or go float the buffalo naked. Get daring and surprise strangers with extra words and extra acts of kindness. Be safe, be happy, be daring. Go the extra mile. At Collision Specialist, we try to do that daily. Santa left your perfect gift at the North Pole. Your most liked registered a whopping 17 likes. Does it sound like we read your Facebook post? We did. Fortunately, we can make it all better at King Jewelers. We still have all sorts of beautiful jewelry, specially priced at King Jewelers, with breathtaking diamonds and engagement rings at wonderful prices. King Jewelers is locally owned. Grover King has over 35 years experience as a certified jeweler. We do all kinds of jewelry, watch repair, and custom design. 16B Conrad Drive in Jackson. King Jewelers, your Valentine gift headquarters. Online at kingjewelersjackson.com and on Facebook. Cooking at home, getting you down? Switch it up with Asia Garden's award-winning sushi with its fresh ingredients or our mouth-watering Chinese food. Call ahead, then walk straight in our front door to the back of the restaurant to pick up your food or call us at 731-668-9024 for us to deliver it right to your door. Asia Garden located for over 35 years here in Jackson, Tennessee. When you're tired of cooking, then give us a call, 731-668-9024 or order online at asiagardenjackson.com. Hey, this is Jimmy Leach inviting you to tune in to my show, The Investigator, every Saturday morning at 9 right here on the Talk of Jackson 93.1. My friend Brad McCoy and I talk about current headlining cases, how law enforcement really works, cold cases, serial killers, and much more. Plus, we'll have special guests like former state attorney generals, private detectives, gang experts, sheriffs and former sheriffs, chiefs of police, and many others. The Investigator with me, Jimmy Leach, every Saturday morning at 9 on the Talk of Jackson 93.1. It is Saturday morning. This is Tricks of the Trade. We have several texts we need to jump on here, John. We've got three backed up here right. on the Victory Honda text line, 731-410-7560. This one says, talking about the shark bike fittings, whatever you put it on, I've always measured what the depth is, then put a mark on the pipe. That way you know how far to go down to that line. Exactly right. There that is go. a good little trick to know right, right there. Right. Otherwise, you may not get it down far enough. That's kind of like the old measure, measure twice and cut once, right? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's see what this one says. You have to hold your mouth just right when tightening plastic on metal. Now, where do I find that female transgender fitting? <laughs> <laughs> You, uh, I, I, you can get the, a female transition fitting at most any big box store or down at a plumbing supply house. Right. And, and, and if that fitting is used on a water heater, it will be a three-quarter inch female. Right. Because the threads are on the inside of the fitting. Right. And uh, you'll put that on, yep. and then you'll, uh, if, you're, if it is a shark bite fitting, yep. you'll just pop your pipe in the top of that and uh, mark your line like the previous text said and then it'll be easy and uh all right yeah be sure you ask for a female transition not a female transgender that's another store yeah <laughs> now we ain't gonna deal with that, <laughs> gonna deal with that. <laughs> another texture says hello I need new weather stripping on the bottom of my very old, about 1995, they say. That's not Single tracked Clope garage door. Can you recommend anyone who could do that? Thank you. Yes, I can. Uh, call Jeff Douglas at Douglas uh, Garage Doors, and uh, Jeff can take care of that or one of his men. Uh, uh, it's a very common problem, and uh, give Jeff a call, and I'm sure he'd be happy to come out. And if you have any trouble getting a hold of him, give me a call, and I'll find him for you because yeah. he's one of my regulars also. He right. works on a lot of doors for me. Yeah. Good if guy. If you can't find John, call me because I've got a sticker on the door of my electrical panel in my garage that has his phone number. There you go. That's right. That's right. Right next to the toolbox, it has John's phone number. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Tricks of the Trade on this Saturday morning. Economy Siding and Windows, our other title sponsor here on uh, Saturday mornings and also on Thursday afternoons with Honey Do's and Honey Don'ts. 
good folks, and, and I hope that uh, Stormy, we've been told Stormy's been a little under the weather lately. Yeah. And uh, Stormy weather. How about that? Work. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Don't start singing. I did. No, kind of kid, okay. trust, me, trust me. So, uh, yeah, hope Stormy's doing better. But uh, yeah, they're, they're great folks, man, and they, they, do, they do a lot of things. It's they not do. just siding and windows. They can do even more than that. You know, yeah, but and and you know, some folks you can do too much, yeah, and not do it well enough. True, but they do just the right amount and get it done right. Absolutely. And uh, so, if you've got any siding that you need on your house, give them a call. If you need replacement windows, now I can tell you some nightmare stories about some people that put in replacement windows. Mm-hmm. They ain't right. They ain't right. And uh, but Stormy's crew will come out. They get them properly sized, and they do have to be measured it's not one of those one size fits all and then just get out a bigger tube of caulking you know they they will uh measure them to fit they'll take your old ones out they'll slide them in get them properly insulated properly screwed in place and then properly trimmed on the outside with some properly cut coil metal to where it looks like it grew there yeah and uh it's just a a a good good company to deal with and if you need some gutters they can take care of that. If you yep. need any gutter guards, they, they can, can take that. care of that. I just yep. had some of those put on my garage. Yep, I'm, I'm in line. So, and yep. uh, so it's a, it's a good deal. So we're, we're proud to have them as sponsors on the show. They're local. Give them a call. Yeah, and something else that we don't talk about often, they also do patio covers. They do. Yeah. Yeah, yep. and uh, do a good one, too. You know, there's some patio covers. It's, you know, I can't say this on the air, but anyway, like water <laughs> falling uh, and it, it splatters. Uh-huh. They have these insulated covers that uh, you know you don't hear the the splatter of the uh-huh. roof, and uh, you know they're insulated to where if you want to put them in a closed in area, they don't sweat and it start dripping from your ceiling. Good deal. Uh, they got some really good, nice looking uh, patio covers that. Don't sound like you're inside of a tin can when it hits. There you go. Economy Siding and Windows, one of our title sponsors, 422-3828, or catch them online at economysiding.com. Need about a minute and a half of your time, and we'll be right back. Have you been thinking about selling your home, or has your home been on the market but still hasn't sold? This is Russ McKelvey. My wife, Sydney, and I completed three real estate transactions with the Haltom Home Team over the past couple of years. Buying a home can be a stressful experience, but the Haltom Home Team's excellent communication made the whole process hassle-free. The staff at the Haltom Home Team knows the local market extremely well. They literally have the buying and selling process down to a science. When we sold our home last year, it didn't even go to market before the Haltom Home Team had a buyer lined up. It literally couldn't have been easier. And don't just believe these guys. Check us out on Zillow, the number one real estate website, where we are ranked number one in sales for Jackson and also have over 200 five-star reviews. They can help you negotiate through multiple offers to get you the most money for your home. And there's no risk. Call the Halton Home Team at 731-984-2200. That's 731-984-2200. Go to HaltomHomeTeam.com. Oh, and start packing. Williams Equipment and Supply is your homegrown, locally owned Bobcat dealer in the Mid-South. And with Bobcat's leading technology backed up by our staff of factory trained parts and service techs, contractors get their work done efficiently and profitably. Whether you prefer to rent, lease, or own, Williams Equipment and Supply has what you need at a price you can afford. This is Wallace West, the Bobcat Man. Call me at 731-668-4352 and let me help you get the equipment that you need to get the job done. Is the cheapest insurance really your best buy? It could be if the coverage is right for you, but how do you know? Hi, this is Roger Smith, Thompson & Smith Insurance, one of the area's oldest and largest trusted choice agencies. Chuck Thompson and I, along with the best team in insurance, have built our company and our reputations as trusted advisors, delivering peace of mind with the choice of many top-rated insurance companies. Although we many times do, Thompson & Smith is not simply going to promise to save you hundreds of dollars over your current plan. What we will promise is a thorough evaluation of your home, auto, or business insurance needs and provide an insurance program to match. Chances are we'll save you money. On the rare occasion that we can't help you, we'll tell you why. Either way, our goal at Thompson & Smith is to help you as a client or to help you as a future client. So if we haven't told you lately, we'd love to add you to our growing list of customers. Experience the Thompson & Smith difference. Call us at 664-4750. That's 664-4750. Or check us out at thompsonandsmith.com. 
Hey, Dan. Hang on. Dan. Uh, hang on. Danny. Whoa. What? Let's sell this house and buy another. Say what? Seriously, this was your house when we got married. We need to find our house. Emily, mi casa es tu casa. Your bachelor pad is my bachelor pad? Okay, babe, look, if we're going to do this, we have to call the Greer Real Estate Group. Oh, I like them. They really care about their clients and they know what they're doing. Well, Brad's hobby is construction and repair. He can help us with what we need to get our house ready for the market. And I like Jennifer. She's kind, helpful, and handles all the paperwork. And Jonathan Greer, he's like a son to me. Speaking of children... Now wait a minute. We've got Freddie and Susie. The cats, Dan. <coughs> Dan, we have to have a pool. Oh, jeez. Could have said it better myself. Three minutes before the 9 o'clock hour on this Saturday morning, Tex John says, Can you recommend a good, honest plumber... That'll show up and do their job. That's that's kind of dangerous. <laughs> but I do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, let's see. We I don't use this show to promote our services, but we do some of that work. Right. But I have a list of several other very good firms that we work with that I'll be happy to share with you. I hate to give out names on stuff like that, but... Because I might miss some. Right. I don't want to insinuate that some are not. But, you know, it, when you get down to experience, you, you look for some of the good firms that have been around for a long time. And there's three or four in this, in this area here that, that they just do good stuff and do it consistently. So if this caller would just call my office uh, Monday, I'll be happy to share several names with you. Um, call me at 427-1120. And uh, not that they're... Not others, but these are ones that I work with because I have to have several in line, and they're always good and fair and honest with us, and I don't have to worry about them. Yep. So. Okay, got one, well, actually two texts from the same same caller, and we've got just about a minute and a half left. It says, best repair option for an office trailer roof leak, please, and thank you for your time. And then he comes back and says, need an electrician also. Just give me a call Monday morning, and I can give you several options on that. And uh, uh, that could be a very simple solution on the roof leak. And the electrical, we can definitely help them out with that. Uh, and also give you some other firms if you want to shop it around a little bit. So so do that. All righty. Just about a minute away from the uh, 9 o'clock hour. Glad to have everybody along with us here on Tricks of the Trade on this Saturday. We do it every Saturday from 8 until 9. Phone lines and text lines are wide open. Thanks to all of those who participated this morning. And uh, we'll do this again next week. What do you think? I think we will. Let's uh, kind of catch it on so we might just keep keep things yeah. rolling right keep here. Keep on babbling, right? That's right. Just babble away. All you right. know, we're all right. It Everybody is. be safe out there this week. It is John Allen's Tricks of the Trade right here at 93.1 and 101.5. Have a